<laughs> Hello and welcome to this final boss fight live stream. I'm not laughing at things that were just said off stream. Honest. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> My name is John and I am joined by Tanny. Uh, Sean. <laughs> Kaboom. Hello. Ben. Hello. <laughs> Maddie. And Sammy is also here. Sup. Sup. Sup, <laughs> uh, so guys. So cool, dude. So, so cool. immediately, oh awesome. immediately before the stream, Ben was informing us of a story of his group of D&D players who seduced Loki and they had a giant gangbang because that's the sort of thing that Loki does. <laughs> <laughs> because D and D, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, D and D, I can and, tell you. And and that Loki had now impregnated, amongst others, the Muppet-born character. Uh, and then there were some impersonations <laughs> happening. If you're one of Ben's really players, don't don't, your ears now. don't don't listen to that bit. But. <laughs> but yeah, the concept of that. Jesus. That that was interesting. Uh, oh yeah, as I say, we're currently waiting for the giant Muppet born to come to life. <laughs> anyway, we are here to play some of my D&D. We're going to be continuing the Tomb of Annihilation. We will look forward to hearing more stories of the giant Muppet born. <laughs> we'll do it sat down on the sofa. <laughs> um, I would love to. But, oh yeah, ooh woo. Ooh woo. But... <laughs> We, 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 we will be picking up from immediately after a walk in the park where, well, actually, we'll be picking up at some point during the end of that where I said, we'll come back to that next time I actually have my book with me. Look, wait, we're not in the park. Uh, so, <laughs> previously on D&D, &D, in the last session of this game, that was an official session of this game, you guys cleared out the Fane of the Night Serpent, you fought Rasnisi and his uh, champion Seklok, as well as a number of guards, and as Jeff points out in the chat, do, 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 punch the snaky snake. <laughs> uh, you, you punched the I, snaky I, I, snakes. I, I, have, I, have to, I have to point out, John, that first you, you pronounce his name wrong, he's Seklok! <laughs> oh, we have fun. <laughs> um, you guys fought and claimed the final puzzle cube and you made your way back to the surface world um, you went back to the amphitheatre and the next morning when you woke up in the amphitheatre uh, Riordan uh, Theodas, Felif and Torin found a note from Seraphine where she explained that Renala, Romad and Seraphine had found a nearby park and had decided that it would be a good time to just take a break from the overwhelming gloom and doom and they left us behind. and just chill. So they had gone on ahead to set up a picnic and you guys were to follow on. You fought a little zombie Tyrannosaurus Rex and the Pez Dispenser uh, and, and a zombie Ankylosaurus and an evil necromancer called Harmon uh, which some people are just getting the joke of now um, I still didn't get it it was a Pez Dispenser no, I'm busy having food I'm having my sacrifices it's a it's a oh, sorry. <laughs> It's a Jurassic Park reference. Uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That is a good question there, Theodis. <laughs> well, if anything, Romag got more better. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that was my exact question to John right after the game. <laughs> what did we do? Uh, what did Romag and others do? Maybe he's, maybe he's more And John's words with magic. <laughs> I'm gonna go with that he didn't notice them. That magic. Uh, so he sucks. Okay. So he lied to us when he said that they must have got past his test. They did by. Yeah, it was fight. I literally. 
Like, we, so we passed it by literally passing him. Yes. And him not noticing. Yes. noticing. <laughs> so that was the first they passed by not passing, the by passing him. So why uh, did we have to fight the dinosaur? It ain't perfect system, okay? <laughs> uh, however, you guys fought the dinosaur. You yeah. you got on the floor and you fought the dinosaur. Uh, we opened a door, got on the floor. Everybody fight that dinosaur. Uh, you you claimed victory over the dinosaur and the mad necromancer resurrecting zombie dinosaurs. Uh, you went into the park and you had a nice afternoon of picnicking, frolicking, and uh, generally having fun. And uh, During that party, Riordan... <laughs> you drank something, didn't you? Yes, Beatrice gave me some nice sorcerer's ale to drink. So did I. I he would you still... would you be so kind as to roll me a D one hundred, please, Rio Dan? And I'll come back to you, Tanny. <laughs> we got twenty five. <laughs> you don't put labels on it. That's your fault. <laughs> it's called reusing. It's recycling. You drink. Oh, that's you drink down the sorcerer's ale, and you have a very weird feeling in the center of your forehead. And suddenly... He's going to get another eye. Boop. Is it one which I recognize it? You get an eye again. You, you get an eye in the middle of your forehead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, Romad. That's quite good. Not your own. Yes. Would you be so kind as to roll me a d100? Well, I just realized that I would turn up perfectly where <laughs> This is the last time Romad accepted a cup from Riadon. <laughs> oh, I guess Romad had some too. Fantastic. Okay. Well, not, huh. not from me. Not from me. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it's basically oh. Riadon drinks on it, then uh, pour, pours a cup for Romad, and Romad drinks, and then Riadon's like, oh shit! <laughs> oh shit, son. Uh, uh Romad. Romad. What? You cast Magic Missile at 5th level. Oh, Ooh. Uh, um. you, you drink from the glass, and suddenly, just in front of you, the tree that you were looking at, just... <laughs> six bolts of magical energy shoot out of you and hit into the tree. Out my mouth. It's basically that I've just grown up magic missiles. Awesome. And there's just a. I don't. I don't mean to be technical, but technically, Orvax is in front of Roman right now. That's that's later on, oh, thankfully. Okay. Thankfully for Orvax. <laughs> so can, can someone sum up what happened to Riordan and Roman basically? Uh, Riordan opens a third eye in the middle of his forehead that lasts for about a minute before sealing up again. Okay. And Romad shoots six bolts of magical energy out of his mouth <laughs> that explodes a tree. <laughs> Would anybody so else means... like to... So that means... it is, why must you judge we can appearance? actually put Riordan in a modeling contest for Triclops. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to be quick. <laughs> Would anybody else like to try and sip from the sorcerer's ale at the party? Yeah, no. do it. I dare ya. Frickin' all of you, dare ya. How much uh, sorcerer's ale do you still have? Uh, taking a look. <clears throat> yeah, it's nothing Because I was down to, I think, but we haven't corrected it on here, I was down to one cask of sorcerer's ale, <laughs> which we're still going through. Which was through. equal to 14 cups, About that, yeah. Yeah. And I've uh, still got the two bottles of pay wine left over as well. I do I'm so question. very tempted to take the cask and just pour it on the fucking ground at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just one question too. Uh, is there one effect about uh, the sorcerer's sail that could actually create more sorcerer's sail? Uh, there isn't. Thankfully. Okay, so it's 14 and then it's done. Yep. Oh, don't say that. Let's try. <laughs> well, I mean, you're more than welcome to... <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Riordan is dead. <laughs> Riordan! <laughs> Yeah. Roll me ten more times. Ninety-five. Wait, 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 if you roll as a hundred, what what the fuck happens? Eighth level five, all centered on yourself. Right. So ninety-five. Ninety-five. Uh, for the first one. 
you and everybody around you suddenly gets very scared of piercing damage for the next minute. <laughs> okay, next one. 34. Uh, for the next minute, you maximise the damage of the next damaging spell you cast. Very nice. Number three is six. Don't roll a one again. <laughs> there is a popping sound. And uh, next to you, there is a small spherical creature with two arms and two legs. And just an eye in the centre of its metallic body that looks that looks Hello. around and goes, "Wee woo, wee woo, oh my God. wee woo, back. wee oh woo." Wee woo. Wee woo. Okay, go for number four. We've got eighty-nine. Uh, you suddenly turn invisible. God damn it, press buttons. <laughs> Just going out to the guys. Woo! And they can't hear you. <laughs> you hit. serious? For the next okay. minute, you become invisible. During that time, other creatures can't hear you. Oh, <laughs> shit. So Riordan just vanishes. Okay. So basically Rolling the next, them. like, five or six things we can't even see happen to him. They just happen, yeah. That depends. If uh, one thing throws him in the pond, we can see the water splashing. You can still see footprints on the ground, yeah. Okay, so... Next roll, if roll 20 will catch up. 54 for number 5. Uh, roll me 5d6. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no one. Oh, no. Does, does, does uh, Riadon actually force from 30 meters high, something like that? So, it's how many d6? Uh, are? Five. Oh, come on, roll 20, catch up. Why do I have a strange feeling that this is the 14. one that like, says, oh, you can't feel the effects of alcohol for this many days or weeks or whatever. It's that one that Maddie just said it is. <laughs> you can't feel the, you can't become intoxicated by alcohol for the next 14 days. God damn it. Okay, going for number six. <laughs> you actually, you actually had that one coming. Yeah, ninety-one. Uh, you suddenly feel it would be okay if you died for the next minute. Yeah, oh. I mean you can't, you, you can't feel the effect of alcohol anymore. Death it would be a swift release, I guess. That's true. <laughs> but wait, uh, that's actually one question. Uh, given that so. you are now in God mode, uh, fused with the two uh, minds in your in your head. Uh, do you need uh, alcohol anymore for uh, <laughs> I don't want to shut them up anymore because they're a part of me. I've accepted them. Yeah, so technically, yeah. But it's for the voices of the dead, which I still see. Uh, that brings us, actually, to the sorry. next question. Why the fuck would you drink sorcerer's hail then? Because I'm an idiot. For the next... Yeah, I live life. My character lives life for the life, for the sake of it. For the next yeah, minute, right also I bought it. Right, everyone quiet. For the next minute, talking. your eyes glow and you can see invisible creatures. Well, if anybody oh saw that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but nobody can see you still. Okay, so going now for number eight. Oh my god, why? What are you doing to Come yourself, on man? Come on, roll 20, roll the dice. There we go, 36. Roll me a d10. 1d10. 1d10. There we go, 4. Uh, how old is Riordan? 200, I think. Uh, let me just remind myself. Uh, you are older than Tiras, I think. My age isn't written down. That's handy. <laughs> <laughs> we woo! That's about the 200 mark. We woo! Yeah. Uh, it's gone up by 4. I'm 204. So now you're all the really name. changed much, but still. Okay, that's fine. We will. Sprightly. Okay, going for number eight. We will. Back to you. Actually, uh, Scar, can you imagine that happening to Marlon? Like, he suddenly turns yeah. four years younger. But yeah, that's. Um, right, we're up to 30. It's the equivalent of 10 years of his life. <laughs> uh, you just vanish and reappear 60 feet away. 
<laughs> but we can but see nobody else can see. Uh, are we done, um, or is there still no, one more? One more. One more. Okay, fine. Oh, damn it! Thirty-seven. I was so fearing the the natural one again. I would piss myself if it was another one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, roll me one d six. One d six coming up. Three. Uh, suddenly, about sixty feet away from the rest of the party. Oh, so exactly where we are done was. Three white jellyfish-like creatures with tentacles and eyes on stalks appear. Do they look friendly? No, this is what Romad had last time, I think. They... No, it was, uh, it was a blast of energy from Romad. This time it's... No, 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 this is ages back, though. I remember this, like, ages back that he, um... Out of character, I know what these are. In character, I'm pretty sure Torin does. I don't think anybody would know what these are. Uh, can Torin cast uh, Detect Evil to see if they're friendly or not? Okay. Why would I have the roll to see whether I can potentially see what they are? They go on, sluts. <laughs> uh, one thing which I would like to do, considering that my character is no longer caring about death, I would like to do a quick perception to see if there's anywhere I can try to top, or at least do something stupid. But, not anything, good, Jimmy. Not that if those things appear, he would do that. Uh, they are good. Okay, so without further ado, let's go to the tomb of annihilation because that's kind of what we hear. And they are aberrations. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, Beardus, as a reminder, this is technically the the day before today. <laughs> no, I'm I'm talking of the session should be about the tomb, <laughs> and we're still talking about what happens to us all the on. Well, you shouldn't have given me a sorcerer's ale at the beginning. You drink <laughs> it twice. <laughs> you should know that if he's going to do it, if someone's going to give it to him once he's going to do it again. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> don't drink the cask while it will be burned. The following morning, you guys wake up in the amphitheater. Some of you with sorer heads than others. Some of you still with a few days of immunity to alcohol left. Some of you remembering what great partiers the flumps were for the whole minute that they were there. I never thought I'd see one dab. <laughs> uh, but now it is time for the grave matter at hand. That's right, back to Fort Nianzo! <laughs> what do you guys do? Do we know where this tomb is? No, we know it's still. Uh, Ovax told us he knew roughly where it was, I think. Plus, Nixit had uh, shown us the general direction. Uh, Nixit has shown you the general direction. Orvax knew that it's in the north end of the town. Hmm. Um, yeah, there was an obelisk mention, apparently. There is a. Uh, Nixit explained that there was an obelisk nearby and that the leader of the kobolds had gone there. Uh, a couple of times to meet with someone. As a quick question, can we actually see the obelisk on the map or not? Maybe you can. I, mean, I pointed out last time that there is this thing here. That's a very pointy stone. I was going <laughs> to say, yeah. And there's, there's an no opening in the... Uh, take a look. I mean, I can't... I can't it's just because that, like, there's like, there's like no other like rocks or things on the map. <laughs> it's just that kind of stands out to me. Maybe it's a trap. It could well be a trap. Um, before you guys head off, uh, okay. Orvax, yes. Orvax with um, Nimgar in hand, will just say, just just remind you of the legend of the nine gods. Uh, just in someone take notes. I feel like this is important. <laughs> just, just remind you of maybe take some notes. <laughs> just just in case this comes up at all. Uh, this 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 is a story that he's told you before. Um, yeah, so something about him going to Philadelphia to live with his uncle and aunt or something. <laughs> that's a different story, all about how his life got turned upside down. He wants us to sit just a minute and sit right there. 
from Toyo. <laughs> Some town called Bel Air? <laughs> Wait, he was a prince? Anyway, uh, this is a story of Omu's nine trickster gods. Uh, long ago, long ago, the god Ubtau hardened his heart and vowed to weep for the people of Omu no longer. The rain stopped falling, the jungle withered and died, and death swept through Omu. That sucks. One morning, a wise Zorbo emerged from her hollow tree and spoke to the dying Omuans. To convince Ubtau of their worth, she decided to cook a stew made of all of their good qualities. Catching such virtues wouldn't be easy, so she asked a wily Almirage to help her. Uh, the Almirage snuck recklessness into the pot, which she saw as a virtue, and Ubdau spat out the stew when he tasted it, and from that day on, Obolaka the Zorba and Aijin the Almirage became terrible enemies. At noon, a brave Kamadan hopped down from her rock. She saw the evil in the Omoan's heart and decided to lance it like a troublesome boil. The Kamadan sat fashioned a holy spear, but she left it by the riverbank and a crafty grung stole it. In her rage, Shigambi the Kamadan forgot all about the Omoans and chased Nang Nang the grung forever across the sky. When evening came, a wily Iblis stepped from his reed hut. He didn't like the Omoans, but without them, he'd have no one to play his tricks on. The Iblis sent a marsh frog to reason with Ubtau, but the frog was angry and decided to wrestle with the god instead. This amused Ubtau, so he gave the frog tentacles to make it stronger. When Kubuzan, the frog Yermuth, returned to Papazotl, the Iblis, he chased Papazotl about the swamp with his new tentacles. That the thing that hates the thing that hates uh, 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 that night, a Sioux monster broke into Ubtau's palace and stole a pail of water for the Omuans. When the god came running to find it, the Sioux monster hid the pail in a Jakuli's barrow. Ubtau asked the jungle animals where the water was hidden. The mower and Moa the Jakuli was too honest to lie. When Wongo the Sioux monster found out how Moa had betrayed him, he vowed to catch the Jakuli and to eat him up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all the while, Unk the flail snail lived deep underground. The noise of the other animals fighting made her slither up to the surface. And when day dawned over her shell, the light blinded Ubtau and made his eyes water. Life returned to Omu, and the people built shrines to honour the animals who had saved them. Well, realistically, the eight dickheads who kept trying to fuck things up, and then the snail that did actually did something. <laughs> yeah, the... yeah. But I suppose, uh. the, I, suppose, I suppose the story wouldn't quite be so like poetically named if it was, you know, the eight dickheads and the snail. <laughs> well, mind you, there's another side of things, because each one's basically mentioned in order. What's the order? So, order? The order uh, of the, uh, so... Let's uh, see. Was, um, so as long ago... Obelaka, the Zorbo, Aijin, the Almirage. Uh, Shigambi the Kamadan and Nang Nang the Grung. I, I made a note of this many, <laughs> many weeks ago. Um, the Wiley Ibis was, uh, um, it was, it was Kubazam the Frakimath and Papazotl the Iblis, or Iblis, or whatever. I think it's Iblis. Uh, Wongo the Sioux Monster and Moa the Chakuli and Unk the Flyer Snail. I've got to say, I love I flail him. snail. And, and, and the cat. <laughs> the cat's not mentioned in the story, but he's obviously very important. It doesn't matter. He's There's always a cat. I don't think that the order is going to be very important. The order may, but... 
I have no idea. The order might be important. The order could be absolutely meaningless, but it's worth noting who's who. And oh yeah, but up oh, well anyway. Now that we know, or we've heard the story, I'm gonna start running. <laughs> okay, to the tomb. <laughs> ja. Does everybody else follow Riorda? <laughs> yep. Uh... Let's go. So the only effect, the only effect of the sorcerer's hail who subsists within Riordan is the inability to be drunk. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, why does that one have to stick around? What about the rest? <laughs> the only other one I think that does actually stick around. Ah, no, you are still four years older. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. I forget about that. One. Uh, the only other one that birthdays. the only other one that sticks around permanently is turning your skin blue, and you did that yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Near the base of the cliffs, a fifteen-foot-tall obelisk of cracked stone, draped with vines and black moss, uh, stands. Uh, Behind it, you you see a you see a. Oh, sorry. Here you guys are. Behind oh. it, you see a dark passageway obscured by withered creepers, and a second, smaller tunnel burrows into the base of a cliff to the east. Hmm. So there is... What does what does the obelisk look like? Can we do a perception? Uh, you can do. Um... There's a cat! <laughs> uh, why am I... Oh. Sorry, let me just take that up to the advantage. Um, this. But I'm guessing the 12 would have got, but no. Nah. <laughs> oh, wait, hang on, hang on. Uh, oh. <laughs> it's just one of those things where having an obelisk outside <laughs> is <something> ordinary. <laughs> uh, so, Seraphine, this is a tree. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Probably. It looks like Groot. But then again, who's Groot? Um, it's Groot with leaves. He's maturing. Uh, I think everybody I else... No. Everybody <laughs> else passes. Yay! Hooray! That's a nice tree. Uh, yeah, so Seraphine is slightly... doesn't notice. The three of you notice... Uh, everybody else, three of you? Why did I say three of you? <laughs> the three of you, Riordan, and everybody else, uh, notices um, perched on the ledge overlooking the obelisk uh, here, here, and here are three uh, gargoyles made from stone. Each has the face of a bearded devil, its mouth agape in a silent scream. Oh, are they like the ones which we saw when we were walking around the cliff edges? Yes. Okay. Uh, together now. The obelisk itself is a very large, it's, it's 60 feet tall, um, made of cracked stone, and it is covered in, it's 15 feet tall, made of cracked stone and is draped in vines and black moss. Interesting. Um, you can make out that there are carvings on it. Uh, but you can't see what they say through the moss and plant life covering it. I, can, can I, can I, take move, the can I remove the moss? Yeah, I was, I was about to say, I was going to try and clear off some of that. <laughs> okay. I mean, given the size of the obelisk, it might not be too much to being two for that. All three of you, to five of you, depending on if you count Gawley and Sif, <laughs> uh, move forward and clean off the obelisk. Uh, and on the south face of it, which is the side facing out towards you, okay. uh, is carved in common. Oh, that, that's peculiar straight away. Yeah. 
Fear the night when the forsaken one seizes death's mantle and the seas dry up and the dead rise and I, Aserak the Eternal, reap the world of the living. Those who dare enter take heed. The enemies oppose. One stands between them. In darkness it hides. Don the mask or be seen. Speak no truth to the doomed child. The keys turn on the inside only. I'm getting my notebook out. <laughs> I'm You're gonna bad. give you a handout. Uh, As Asarax is, is not. That's much more like it. Uh, I have a question. Uh, Asarax is not one of the nine tricks to go. Nope. Okay. Uh, That's the one which was mentioned. Tanny! That may bring a bell to anyone. Not about Tanny, though. Romad, stop moving there, and I will describe what you see in front of you. Uh, They're after me, sorry guys. <laughs> alcoves run the length of this narrow tunnel, each one featuring a bestial statue standing or squatting above a basin of oil. <laughs> uh, so, moving along the tunnel, the two that you are stood next to at the moment uh, depict Moa and Wongo. Wongo! Wait, is Roman going in alone? Yes, because of course. Okay, well, he's fucked. That's what? Well, I do have a quick question for Safe, which is: Would Safe recognize the name which was etched on there? Um, Asarak. 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 I have heard of the name in passing. Asarak was a lich. It's mm. it's been a while since I've been in the right circles to. Hear such things. Of course. But, but, but Asarak was a lich of some renown who had. I'm guessing not as good renown as well. No, liches don't tend to be. No, you, you liches. There's always a chance. <laughs> the fact of the matter, though, this one's bad, hey. Right, guys. Well, as you've heard yourself, I suppose it's safe uses my voice now. I don't know why I'm talking for him. <laughs> Seraphine, there's a cool writing on the other desk. What? Okay, I'll come see the writing. <laughs> so, mm, so Asarak is a lich. It's a lich. And by the mm. sounds of things, not a good deal. Lemon. I wonder. Yes. So, Romad, you can see eight statues. I'm just tapping around for me. Uh, quick, quick question. Torin has the puzzle cubes, right? I do. Yes. I yes. believe so, yes. Yes, I believe he took the ones which I was holding. because he's... Cool. Yeah, he has all of them. <laughs> he's juggling with them to keep them in uh, constant move. Uh, I'm just trying to see a thing. As long as it's not leeches, I'm fine. Yeah, leeches can go fuck right off. Dragon Bay talks! <laughs> he smells of leeches. <laughs> I mean, he could, he could actually talk if Surfing no. casts tongues on him. Uh, Romad, could you roll me a perception check? Yeah. Nothing! Yep, there are statues here. These are pretty good statues, guys. <laughs> well, I like statues. Do you want to come over here, then? I'm not sure I can actually hear him. I have high perception. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got long ears, guys. Come on now. Nicholas, what does your hear have, Cash? <laughs> well, Theodos would have heard it, but would ignore it. <laughs> yeah, I don't tend to ignore nice. this he, I know what it's like there. to be ignored. He would be, he would be instantly pissed to see Roman go in without the groove. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just annoyed. These are some nice statues. White grass or the white grass? <laughs> Because Jurassic Park 2. Oh, yeah. Definitely. 
I, I just love the moment when one guy yells a warning and the whole group is like, meh, who cares the nerd? Pretty much. No, 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 no. Uh, real Dan, yes. you enter the tunnel and there are eight statues of the creatures. Eight of the creatures that were mentioned in the story carved uh, either sitting or squatting uh, or standing uh, along either wall. Uh, make me a perception check. Another one? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes. Twenty. You got nice statues. Uh, I saw a Bing. Was that? Was that? That is a Bing. Bear with me one moment. We're dead, guys. <laughs> You're, we're dead. Uh, uh, creating a new big bird. <laughs> You spot a, uh, there's a seam in the wall at the end of this tunnel. Oh. Interesting. I don't know if anyone heard that, but there's a cat here. <laughs> so, Romat went that way. And you can see a, um... Billy, is that you? You can see that the, no, the wall I at the end of the mean, corridor seems like it should I open. I don't actually know, it's, it's a very insulting thing to say to a Tabapsi from a non Tabapsi. Okay. Guys, it looks like there's a door down here. Uh, we're I... statues of the gods. Uh, for Leaf, yes. for a start. Yes. I'm going to warn you now if you guys keep wandering, if you guys wander off in the tomb itself, it will kill you. Uh, I'm just inspecting the front door at the moment. Like I was looking for. J just saying, John. Why do you think I haven't moved? I'm well aware. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you to all of you who have stayed still, which is largely dragon bait, <laughs> a Seraphine, uh, and and Torin as well has moved a little bit, but you know he's staying sensibly with the rest of the group. I'm and didn't Tammy, wonder, apparently. It's Tammy who's. <laughs> We're just playing with the people who can't really protect themselves. Uh, Felice, a short yes. tunnel ends in a slab of worked stone whose edges are marked by relief carvings of grinning skulls. Four lines engraved at the centre of the slab cross each other to form a star, with both ends of we both ends of each line marking the location of a cube-shaped cavity carved into the door. Eight cavities in total. Eight? Eight cavities in total. And we got nine relation... That's weird. Ah, no, no. It might be in relation to the eight gods which have got down this tunnel. So, what's the ninth? Uh... What, what ones are, are, have we seen? Yeah. Which ones are down this tunnel? Uh, we said that there were the eight gods, but... Oh, yes, the enemies face each other. Moach, Kuli, Wongo, the Sioux Monster, Aijin, the Almiraj, Obalaka, the Zorbo, Papazotl, the Iblis, Kubazan, the Frogiamoth, and Nangnang, -Nang, the Grung, and Shigambi, the Kamadan, are down that tunnel. We don't have Unk the Flail Snail. So, all but the snail. In which case, for the sake of that door, I think it's all but the snail, unless... Nope. For the sake of these statues, um, is there any chance... Is there a place for cubes to be attached to these, rather than to the Smiling Skull door? There isn't. Okay. However, there is a door at the end of the tunnel that you have you have seen, Riordan. Is there... I'd like to try and just... Is it possible to push this door open? Yes. I would like to try and push the door open. And there's the knife. The door slides open and there is a statue of Unk 
um, and hanging from one of its um, tentacles is a necklace in the shape of an eye. Okay. I would like to... Uh, first of all, can I make a possession to make sure there's no traps? Uh, you can. You don't see any traps. In which case, I reach forth and take the necklace. You now have a necklace. It is a gold necklace. The pendant is, sh <coughs> is shaped like an eyeball. Open eyeball. Okay. For the moment, I put it on. Okay. You are now wearing a golden necklace in the shape of an eyeball. Oh, go. Check out my bling, bros. <laughs> I don't know, but I have a feeling this is going to be important. Jewelry. Coming from a statue of Unk. I mean, Romad, you've got detect magic. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, I detect that. Okay, uh, so, I got it. Romad, the pendant yeah. is emitting a aura of divination magic. Ah, divination magic is well out. And the obelisk is emitting a very, very strong, uh, what type of magic was it? That's not good. Uh, very, That's very it. strong abjuration magic. So, okay, so the uh, necklace is given off divination magic, and the uh, obelisk sort of, yeah, is abjuration magic is, like, over the roof. Real Dan? Yes? As you get back to the uh, obelisk, yes. the necklace, you it doesn't actually move but you feel a tug as if okay. it's trying to lead you over to the uh, to the west to the west this way okay. towards this tree I follow it I follow it then roll 20 froze yeah. <laughs> okay I'm over the well, I'm over at the tree. I don't know whether I am on your screen yet. You are now on my screen there. <laughs> uh, make me a perception check with advantage. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Let's see. Oh, don't roll poopy. <laughs> 22. I think that's all right. Uh, you see in the, in the thick foliage over here uh, a hidden entrance. Interesting. Can I take a look down it? You can. Uh, okay. Um, once again, perception for the sake of uh, traps or will my passive 15 do? Uh, one moment. Boop. <laughs> oh. I disappeared. Oops. I disappeared. <laughs> uh, that went to the wrong layer. That should go to here. <laughs> Sorry, I accidentally put the actual ground on the. Uh, you pull aside the heavy overgrowth and uncover an archway in the ca in the cliff face. Uh, stone skulls peer down from the lintel, and the old bones litter the threshold. As light strikes the entrance, a swarm of bats just and just fly off into the distance. Wow. Some interesting bats make that sound. <laughs> the flight hey guys, I think I found a second entrance. Maybe. But which yeah. entrance is the real entrance? I'm gonna slowly wander in. I'll just say, will my passive perception be okay to check for a trap? Or as I'm looking now. Uh, I'll, I'll leave you with that passive perception. You see no traps at the moment. Okay. I want to go up and uh, you up. can see in the ground very old boot prints ah. leading in, but not leading out. 
Well, that's encouraging. Okay. I'll quickly run back here so I can get around to the corner. This is interesting around here, guys. Take a look. We've got blueprints going in. Nothing coming out. Personally, I'm curious. Bob, what do we I think? think? That, I think that might be a sign that that might be... Well, that's Not certain, a good we... way to go. <laughs> Judging from this warning, how cryptic it is, the one in front of us is screaming that it is not entrance. Mm -hmm. Potentially, on uh, the other side of things, have you seen any footprints on the other side going towards that door? At least this one actually looks like it might be an entrance. Goes and has a look at this. I'm assuming I'm going to have to, like, roll perception because my perception, like, passive is shit. Yes, if, if you want to roll me a perception. Perception, perception. Seventeen. Uh, okay. You don't see any boot prints leading into this door. Uh, what you do see um, is immediately here as you're looking, you'll look down at the dirt and see nothing, but you look up and you see there is a stone block in the entrance way here, just above your head, that looks like if something goes wrong, it will fall. Hello. Hi, Bill. Hello. Mm. Yep, I can know that. You see. <laughs> it's not important. Big okay. stone would drop down here if we fight. I just literally turn around and go, yep, that's okay. not the way in. <laughs> so, basically a trap? That's yeah, if, trap. We fuck up, if we fuck up, we're, we're stuck here, basically. Oh. How do we prevent that? Fluff! Oh, we don't go... I think the reason that's there is to think, make people think that is the entrance. I think where Riordan is, is the entrance. Okay, so take entrance. Oh. I have a oh, my medication's on there, sweetie. Come on. Right. Are you back in serious? So this door does it also have the uh, the grooves, or does it? Uh, is this just the door. <coughs> when I stop coughing, uh, there is a slab. Sorry, I'm just going to move Dragon Bait up before I forget him. There is a slab of worked stone that blocks the overgrown tunnel about 20 feet from the entrance. In the centre, oh, uh, grinning skulls mark the edge of the slab, and the centre is nine cube-shaped cavities arranged in three rows of three. Okay. Is, is it currently dark? Uh, no, it's about midday. Uh, and the light because, is coming down this tunnel. Because Torin can't see shit. <laughs> you have a glowing sword now. Huh, why Torin no see things when things could be should be seen? <laughs> uh, can anybody see shit is my next question. I, I, I can, can see, see shit. I can. Yes. Literally, Kamala just moved next to me and she's turned into like a ghostly owl. <laughs> did, did, did you give Torin sight? Yeah, Torin has sight. Apparently no. You, it it is dark down there. Huh? Huh? Who knew? And I would light my lantern or sword or something to the extent. Uh, what lantern is forty twenty? I got I got the hooded lantern. I'm gonna light. You light your lantern, and now you can see. I hope you can see. If you can't see, I don't I can, know. I can indeed see. I can indeed cool. see. Cool. And I and Torin is just going to secretly, secretly wish that there's something in there that gives him light vision of some description. <laughs> <laughs> For the sake of this door, um, yeah, we all have nice vision. Mean, it's just that. I For, the sake... <laughs> For the sake of this door and the recesses, which are obviously cube shaped, is there any clues on the door itself as to where these cubes should be put in or in order? I'm now going to move you guys over here. Oh, God! <laughs> okay. I think I've probably found my favorite. I need to zoom out. That's because I'm a dragon. You see a 3x3 three three 
set of cavities. And you have nine cubes in a bag of holding that all resemble the cubes at the bottom of this map. We do. Indeed. The real question is, where exactly do they go? In which order? Uh, Romad. Yeah. I assume Romad enters this I do, yeah. uh, tunnel. Uh, your detect magic that you still have up yep. uh, has an aura of evocation magic around each of the cavities. Evocation magic around here, guys? What does that mean? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, some Evo. Do you know what that means? Evocation magic tends to be uh, explodey. Yeah. Oh boy. We're gonna have to get it right, or we get damaged. Sounds that way. Well, then, in that case, if it could be potentially explodey, would it be wise for we figure out roughly which order we want to put it in? One person stay at front, the rest stand back. If it go big, bad, boomy. At the very least, we can heal our injured party, and the rest of us should be relatively safe. Right. Is there any indication in any of the clues that we've gotten that could possibly tell us what order to put them in? Yes, um, the enemy oppose each other, and one stands between them. So that that would mean There's nothing that works here. I mean, we know that each of them that there there are almost. Ah! Four sets of two that have enemies, and then there's one that has no enemy. Yep, so that's the one in the center. So, um, um, so the one I need to zoom out further so I can actually interact with this thing. Yeah, <laughs> you should be able to move the tokens. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, Sean, you're the one assigned to move the totem and the only one for that because you're the one who took yeah. notes. Otherwise, it turns into a clusterfuck. Good luck. <laughs> yep. So, uh, so Turin, uh, so, what, was the, what was the one without enemies? We know that Unk was the last one and he had no enemy. If you so wish to... If you wish to place them in the puzzle area and say that you're doing this not actually in the door yet. I will allow you to figure things out that way for now. That's oh, that's nice. Thank well, you. Thank you. I will so, be kind. So, so I thought we would like get the cubes out and like place them on the floor in front of it. Yeah, and, let's say we do. And, and he kind of like makes like a little grid, so like, the, a, the, like a three by three grid, and puts Unk's cube in the middle. So the snail had no enemy. Um, had no enemy. As the enemies, we had the, the Buried King, that one, and the Grung, I think that's... No, it's the Fugimo, who chased him after coming back from God, from wrestling. Yeah. Fugimo would be the first one, I think. Um, is, is there Uptao amongst the ace remaining? I don't see... No, I don't Up, think... Uptau is not one of the nine trickster gods. Okay. Uptau is the big god that they were trying to appease. Okay, because I remember the Fugimov tried to wrestle so, Uptau. He so... had the Zorbo, who was enemies with the Aijin. With Aijin the Almirage, so the rabbit and... Yeah, this one, yeah. So, that one and... Which one was... Hold on. We start the handouts of the different cubes. I don't. I can't find them. Yeah, I can't remember where uh, I them they're in chapter yeah, three. The is, yeah, the rabbit cubes. engine. Yep. So the one. So that one is the Sioux monster. That one is the Zorbo. So that one and that one are together. Okay. Um. So, so mon the rabbity rabbit and Zorbo. So that would make those two. There as well, and then how do we place the four remaining? Well, we've already uh, we've we got the grung. Yep. Oh, I believe all of the. I think we put them all in their particular, with their particular. 
that's his enemy. Yeah. So the ground stole the spear from. Okay, from the snake. Yeah. So, so you're saying enemy goes. Enemies go opposite. That yep. makes sense. The, uh, so we go. Yep. So, speaking, it's pretty easy to do, really. Yeah, no, but like you, I think you had it right the first time. There should be uh, uh, more. To... The enemy of the the thing with like tentacles coming out of his back is the enemy of the grung, which is that one. Oh, okay. so not uh, not that one. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, so the question is, uh, do they have only one enemy? Because if if uh, any of them got um, is uh, in bad terms with two, I mean, we could actually uh, then uh, imagine, for instance, it would be a corner. We've not heard of any one. I mean, the tale has been literally this one doesn't like this one, this one doesn't like this one, this one doesn't like this one, and, and then Unk is there going, Hey guys, chill out! Um, <laughs> okay, uh, so... I think... So, so long as they're not... So long as the enemies aren't next to each other... Oh, possibly... Uh, the, the problem with... Complete, cause especially with judging by that corridor, I think they've yeah. got to be opposite each other. The, the problem with your theory, Carboom, is that oh. uh, if if we have one enemy here who is enemy, let's say, with this one and this one, that means it would be enemy with this one as well, so you have three enemies. Hmm. So it's oh, yeah, yeah, just yeah. not possible. Yeah. I think it's literally just hunk in the middle, okay. and then so long as you've got, like, enemy, enemy, I enemy, agree. So enemy. the so order... Fine. So the order is not... No, that's why the one stands between them, okay. Because there's no way you can, I don't think there's any way we could ever figure out which one would go, like, one particular one to go in that corner. Maybe in order of the story, I don't know. In order of the story, because cause then obviously to have the the enemy opposite, they'd be right at the end of the story. Seraphine has a theory. Seraphine has a theory. Yeah, has a theory. yeah it was actually... It was, it was sh I misspelled it. It was actually it was actually the thing that Sammy said. Like, what if, like, in the order of the story, so say like the first person we hear of would go there, and then their enemy would go here, and the second here, enemy there, third yeah. here, enemy there, and then the yeah, last one here, easily, enemy there. We can, we can easily do. We can easily do that. So what would be uh, the first one? Hold on. I have one quick question when it comes down to. When I was down that corridor, John. Yes. Were the enemies of each other the opposite side down that corridor? Um. Basically, that corridor with all the statues of the gods might be the clue. That's also where I found the eye which showed us here, so I'm guessing <laughs> it could be a clue. <laughs> <laughs> no game breaking magic just yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I mean, you've got enough magic anyway. Um, just no time reversal. Seraphine uh, can turn bones into sugar. Hmm. The statues depict the nine trickster gods, each facing pair of alcos dedicated to two trickster gods who oppose each other. So yeah, it does show the enemies, and they matched up the... Uh, um, is there a particular order? No. Okay, in which case, yes. Yeah, so long as they're opposite each other, I think we're we're golden then. Well, if we if we go by Sammy's thing anyway, just in case. Yeah. So it would be. Let us say uh, 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 Um. Then it was the Camadan and the Grung. Then it was the. So the frog hemoth was next. Then it was the frog hemoth. Yeah. Was the frog hemoth mentioned first, or was it mentioned? I think it was mentioned second, but I think yeah. that was the I third so, story. Too. It was Iblis. Yep. The Iblis wanted to send the frog hemoth to then face was, the gods. Then it was the Sioux monster and the Jakuli. And so you're placing yeah, that. Comp. That, that's that's just on the floor for now. That's just on the floor. Does anyone have any objections? No, I think we can try that. 
I if love you want to with that, then you will go for it. <laughs> okay. Ah, okay. I like that. That's good. Who's? Yeah. Yeah. Still doing our same thing. Got one person bit. standing forward. I think. I think, but I pretty much between me and Philippe, we should do it because we have the most health. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, people totally like fair. Seraphine or Riadon would go. Would be annihilated just <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Here, Seraphine, I'll carry you. Place the last cube to have a fun family time. Oh. Sharm says she likes the cautious approach you guys are taking. Okay. We've, well, we don't want to we've been warned many times we would die in this thing. Yeah. So... This adventure is called the Tomb of Annihilation. <laughs> We're about to enter a tomb. Of annihilation. <laughs> we'll get annihilated. Uh, so, Torin, yes. are you placing the stones in in that order? I am placing the two stones in in that order. And everybody else has backed up far away. Mm-hmm. Yep. You slide the cubes in, and each of the cubes perfectly slots into place. Um. And as you place the final cube, the nine cubes flare with light and vanish. And growling like an angry beast, the stone slab slides upwards into the ceiling. Just... <laughs> I think I got it. I think we got it right. 